There is a lot that we know for certain about Anne Boleyn and her brutal execution inside of the Tower of London. For example, we know that Henry VIII's second wife and queen was executed following being found guilty within the Tower itself of adultery, incest and treason against her husband. We also know that a French swordsman was summoned from France to take off her head cleanly in one final act of mercy by her husband, King Henry VIII. But there is a great deal that 500 years on that we do not know. And today Anne's story and downfall still captivates the world because of this. There is even much rumour about the burial site of Anne Boleyn and whether her heart was taken from the Tower of London to be buried in other places. But it's believed that Anne was buried inside of the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula within the walls of the place where she met a barbaric end. In 1876, following renovations of the chapel, her remains were dug up and it's said that they were identified by a surgeon Dr. Frederick J. Mowat. He said of her alleged remains that they were of a female of between 25 and 30 years of age, of a delicate frame of body, and who had been of slender and perfect proportions. The forehead and lower jaw were small and especially well formed, and the vertebrae were particularly small, especially one joint, the atlas, which was that next to the skull and that they bore witness to the Queen's little neck. He also said that the bones of the head indicate a well-formed round skull with an intellectual forehead, straight orbital ridge, large eyes, oval face, and a rather square full chin. The remains of the vertebrae and the bones of the lower limbs indicate a well-formed woman of middle height with a short and slender neck. The ribs show depth and roundness of chest, and the hands and feet bones indicate delicate and well-shaped hands and feet, with tapering fingers and a narrow foot. All of the men who witnessed the exhumation confirmed it was of a female body who had died from beheading. But there was still doubt about the remains of Anne Boleyn, and without proper DNA testing, we will never really know the full story. But there is one part of Anne's execution that remains a mystery, and it concerns her burial and the identity of those women who accompanied her to the execution, onto the scaffold, and then subsequently buried her too. It was believed that they were very loyal women, and that they wished to have her remains interred with great dignity performing the job themselves, rather than a man or an executioner mishandling her body and remains. As Anne Boleyn was led to the scaffold on the 19th of May 1536 by William Kingston, the constable of the Tower, she was flanked by four women who were described as young. These women were, it's believed, the same ladies that were with her whilst she was imprisoned inside the Tower of London. As Anne made her way onto the scaffold, she spoke to the crowd saying, Good Christian people, I have not come here to preach a sermon, I have come here to die. For according to the law and by the law I am judged to die, and therefore I will speak nothing against it. I am come hither to accuse no man, nor to speak of that whereof I am accused and condemned to die. But I pray, God save the king, and send him long to reign over you, for a gentler nor a more merciful prince was there never, and to me he was ever a good, a gentle and sovereign lord. And if any person will meddle of my cause, I require them to judge the best, and thus I take my leave of the world, and of all of you, and I heartily desire you all to pray for me. After this, her ladies came forward and removed her mantle, and the Queen showed her famous little neck that the executioner would make easy work of. It was here that the ladies who accompanied her sobbed and cried, and Anne, it was said, showed no fear. After the swordsman struck with one swift blow of his weapon, the bloody job had been done. The blood flowed across the scaffold, and her sobbing ladies-in-waiting gathered up her head and her body, 
seeing one final job to perform. They gathered the Queen's remains in white cloth and took them from the scaffold on the short journey into the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula. Whilst inside here, the blood-stained remains were then placed into an old elm chest, which it's believed once contained bow staves, and then Anne was buried in an unmarked grave, with very little pomp or ceremony. But one of the biggest questions that still puzzles historians is who were these women who accompanied Anne Boleyn and went with her to the scaffold? These women were responsible for Anne Boleyn's burial after all, and were there to perform the job themselves. There is great debate within historians as to who these four women were, and to look for evidence we need to consult the letters from the constable of the Tower, William Kingston, to Thomas Cromwell. In these letters, Kingston wrote of Anne's activities inside of the Tower, to the man who plotted her downfall. From this we know for certain that four women were in attendance for the Queen. The first woman was Mary Scrope, Lady Kingston, who was the wife of William Kingston, the Tower's constable. She had been involved in attending on Anne during her trial also, but Lady Kingston rolled inside of the Tower, and Anne's entourage may have been more sinister than simply attending on a woman who was to die. It's believed that she had been appointed to serve Anne in her final days by Cromwell, who sent her into Anne's service to record anything that was said by Anne that could incriminate her and act as evidence. And by spying on the woman she was meant to be serving, she could have been seen as working for Cromwell. Another woman who was certainly inside of the tower with Anne Boleyn was Margaret Dymoke or Coffin. She was married to Sir William Coffin, who was Anne's master of the horse. It was said in one letter by Kingston that, I have everything told to me by Mistress Coffin that she thinks met for me to know. It's been stated also that Margaret Coffin also slept on a pallet by the foot of Anne Boleyn's bed inside of her bedchamber, where she was kept prisoner. Another woman, it's believed, was with Anne was Lady Elizabeth Boleyn, who was married to Sir James Boleyn, Anne's own uncle. It's known that along with Lady Kingston, Lady Boleyn accompanied Anne to her trial on the 15th of May, which was held inside of the Tower mere days before she died. It's unclear why these two were chosen to do this, but they could have been involved in Cromwell's ideas and could even have been brought in the hope that they would testify against Anne. The final woman it's known that was inside of the Tower of London was Elizabeth Stoner, who was classed as the mother of the maid, and it was her job within Anne's court to look after other maids of honour, and to Anne Boleyn she acted as a domestic servant. There are other women who it's believed could have been there, including Mrs Mary Orchard, the former old nurse of Anne, and some reference to a Mary was written by William Kingston. It's also been alleged that along with Anne was Lady Anne Shelton, Thomas Boleyn's sister, who was married to John Shelton. Anne Shelton was rather senior in the court of Henry VIII, and was responsible for the households of Princess Mary and Elizabeth, and it's believed that she was not fond of Anne Boleyn. There is mention of a Mrs Scouton, believed to have been a mistake, inside of Kingston's letters, and he reports of a conversation Anne had with Francis Weston regarding flirting with Mad Shelton. Anne Boleyn, however, was not impressed by the women she was allowed to be accompanied with in her final days. She disliked the women appointed to serve her, and often moaned about how unkind Henry VIII was, forcing her to keep company with women that she never loved or cared much about during her final days. William Kingston would appease her, saying that the women were honest and good women, but Anne said she wished she was accompanied by the ladies of her own privy chamber. But we know that the four women, escorted by William Kingston, made their way with Anne and followed her the fifty yards to the scaffold. These four women inside of the tower, it's believed, were appointed by Cromwell to spy on Anne, but they are referred to as simply young women in accounts, and it's believed by some historians that they were maids of honour within Anne's household. 
there was a belief that Margaret Wyatt, the sister of poet Thomas Wyatt and Catherine Carey, Anne's niece, went with her to the scaffold, but evidence for this is sketchy. An account found within the Vienna archives written by an anonymous author states of Anne's execution. The said queen finally was beheaded upon a scaffold with the tower with open gates. She was brought by the captain upon the said scaffold and four young ladies followed her. A young lady presented her with a linen cap which she covered her hair and she dealt down, fastening her clothes about her feet, and one of the ladies bandaged her eyes. Immediately the executioner did his office, and when her head was off, it was taken by a young lady and covered with a white cloth. Other accounts state how shortly before Anne's execution she turned to her four ladies and thanked them for their diligent service inside of the tower. The identity of the four women who went with Anne Boleyn to her execution does remain a debate. Were they spies, entrusted with a mission by Cromwell to gather evidence? They clearly weren't the closest with the Queen, and with this it's believed they could have been on the periphery of the court, seeing Anne's execution no doubt for them was a rather sad and tragic event, but they ultimately were the women who then went on to bury the Queen. They carried her remains into the nearby chapel and were said to be half dead with grief and upset and then buried her inside of a makeshift coffin meant for bows and not bodies. Anne's body, upon exhumation, would remain out of the grave for five months during the renovations to her resting place and today she's laid to rest beneath the high altar of the chapel of St Peter Advincula. Anne Boleyn at least was granted the privilege of having a number of women to attend on her during her final days. Catherine Howard, the fifth wife of Henry VIII, was sentenced to death by an act of Attender and was brought to the Tower of London when she was beheaded by a commoner's axe. She went to her death with no accompanying women, except Lady Rochford, Jane Boleyn, who would then be executed straight away after. Catherine Howard's remains, as believed, were even covered in quicklime inside of the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula to erase her from history. But the mystery of who buried Anne Boleyn and went with her to the scaffold remains questionable 500 years on, and there is great debate still around this. Was she allowed her closest advisers, or was she given spies to report on her every moment and word that could result in a guilty verdict at her trial? The story of Anne Boleyn and her brutal execution inside the Tower of London still captivates the world 500 years on. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.